All right, so welcome again. We are starting this evening in a supported fish pose. I'm gonna use blocks for this, one block for the back of the head um, and one block to create thoracic opening. So this is a back bend. Um, I have a cork block, which is pretty hard around the edges, so I'm just gonna lay my blanket very thinly over that. And I wouldn't recommend going higher than the medium height. Um, the tall height is way too big. So low or medium. And wherever you go with your spine block, you're also gonna want the same height block for the back of the head. So I'm just gonna pad this a little bit. And in this pose, we're creating this huge opening on the front side of the body. We're putting the thoracic spine in the really opposite curvature that it naturally likes to be in. So make sure that you are comfortable, take as much time as you need, kind of adjusting or wiggling so that you get it in the right place. For me, it's like right where my bra line goes. So right at the base of the shoulder blades so that we've got this big old arc in the upper back and then the other block is going to come right to the back of my skull. Adjusting a little bit so that muscles are more or less happy. And then notice what's going on with your lower back. You may need to press into your feet and lift your hips and adjust that position so that your lower back can feel long. Pelvis should be definitely on the floor. And your feet are either on the ground with your knees bent, or you can extend your legs. That might make the lower back bend a little more intense. That might not work for you. If it feels good, then that's where you can be. Let's open the arms out to the sides, just a little lower than the height of the shoulders, so that you have the weight of gravity pressing down on the head of your arm bone here, the head of the humerus, so that you really expand the heart space. And if you feel settled here, then gently close your eyes. So again, this is a pretty unnatural position for the spine to be in. But it's a really great way to counter the effects of long-term sitting, whether that's sitting in a chair, for work or sitting driving in a car for a long period of time. Sitting causes an excess of kyphosis or rounding in the upper back, which can really have a domino effect with all sorts of other issues with our spine and alignment and posture. And so a posture like this one, supported fish pose, is a great way to open up the front of the body. Take a moment to check in and observe how your body feels in this shape. If there's any reactivity in the muscles of your back where the block is touching, just spend a quiet moment trying to consciously soften that area and just give in to the support of the prop. start to notice how you're breathing here. Just watching your rise and fall in your abdomen. And whenever it feels right to you, Start the process of gradually expanding your breath, slowing down and deepening your inhalation, 
slowing down and deepening your exhalation. in this position, you can try a variation for the shoulders and the arms. Join your palms together above your face so that the palms face each other. And then feel your shoulder blades slide down toward the floor so they really integrate on your back. And then separate your palms just about shoulder width apart. And now glide your arms up and over your head. If this position is comfortable for you, the thumbs might lightly touch the floor behind you. Palms still face each other. See if you can hold it for five breaths. just enough so that you can clear these props away from your mat for now and then lie flat down on your back giving your spine a chance to settle into its natural curvatures take a moment just to find alignment between the shoulders and the back of the hips Good. all right from here we're going to take a twist for the spine Let's cross the right thigh over the left, like you would if you were sitting in a seat, and then adjust your hips to the right side of your mat. Maybe one, one or two shifts to the right. And then drop your knees down together to the left for an eagle leg variation of this twist. Let's take the arms out to the side and do a little cactus position, so a 90 degree bend of the elbows. Try and press the back of the hands firmly into the floor really open the right side of your chest so you can connect the back of that shoulder to the floor here. And every time you inhale in this twist, imagine like you're trying to arch your upper back again, like it just was in that block support. And every time you exhale, really contract the right side, drawing the navel in, feeling the lower ribs squeeze together, emptying the air. Three more deep breaths here. Good. And let's uncross the legs while still in the twist. So just undo that so the legs are stacked first and then. Rock the knees up, adjust your hips so they're centered below your shoulders. Pause there for a moment. And then we'll set up for the other side. Left thigh is gonna cross tightly over the right thigh. Push down against your foot and move your hips over to the left side of your mat. One or two little shifts. And then drop the knees together over to the right, that eagle leg twist, which is nice and deep for the low back. Elbows are in that cactus bend, 90 degrees, back of the hands firmly pressing. 
Try to ground the left shoulder to the floor to open the chest. Feel yourself expand with every breath in and a touch of arching sensation in the upper back and full deep contractions every time you breathe out. Last inhalation. Exhale completely and just uncross the thighs here. Bring the knees back up and adjust your hips so they're centered below your shoulders. Good. Pause for a moment with your feet flat on the floor. Maybe pick up your pelvis so that you've got the natural arch in your lower back. Adjust your shoulders if need be. Just let your spine settle into the ground. Good. From here, let's bring your right knee to the chest. You can hug the shin. Slide your left leg down onto the mat, rounding that heel to the floor. Find some nice deep hip flexion here as you breathe. Every time you exhale, feeling that leg draw closer to the upper body. Good. And then interlace your hands around the back side of the thigh, so you're hugging the hamstrings. And then just reach your heel up toward the ceiling. No strap for now, just testing where the hamstrings are at this evening. See if you can flex at the ankle and draw the toes back toward your shin or kneecap. Really extend the back of the leg. Good, from here I want you to draw your navel in and down so that you're flattening your lower back and toning your abdominal wall. And then you're gonna tuck the chin to the chest and start to walk your hands as high up your leg as you can manage as you now round the spine. Try and bring the nose and knee closer together. Low back is flat and pressing into the floor. Your tailbone's kind of tucking toward your left heel. You're breathing here. Last breath in. Exhale and walk back down, walk your hands down on the leg. Good, bend your left knee now and place the foot on the floor and then cross your right ankle to the left thigh. You can use your hands to help place it there for reclined pigeon pose. Pressing that knee forward away from your face. And you can take the second stage if that feels good to you. Bring the legs in, again, flattening the low back, reaching through and holding onto the back of your left thigh. Maybe a little rocking motion side to side. Curl and spread the toes or roll the ankles around. Good. Last deep breath in. Exhale. Let it go. Uncross the ankle. Good. Slide your right leg down to the floor and bring your left knee to your chest, hugging it close to the body for a few breaths, working on that deep flexion in the hip joint and anchoring the right leg to the ground. Good. And then hold on to the back of the thigh, grabbing the hamstring, clasping the hands. Reach your left heel up toward the ceiling as best as you can, working on stretching the hamstrings. Just seeing how straight you can get that leg on its own. The heel reaches up, toes point toward your kneecap or shin. And then navel draws down and in, flattening the low back, engaging the abdominals. Tuck the chin and roll your spine up, walking the hands higher up the leg, any amount, trying to bring the upper body closer to the front of the thigh. Feel your low back. Press into the floor. Your abdominal wall is still contracted, although you are breathing, not holding. Last breath in. And exhale, walk it back down. Bend your 
right knee and place the foot on the ground, and then cross your left ankle to the center of the right thigh and guide the left knee away from your face. Good, you can stay here or bring the legs in, reach through that space and hold on to the right hamstrings. Gently rocking side to side if you like in our reclined pigeon pose. Noticing how this side feels. Last deep breath in. Exhale, let it go. Uncross the leg. Good. Let's bring both knees to the chest. And you can start to rock up and down your spine, taking a few of these to come all the way upright. And once you're upright, cross your ankles. Good. And we'll come forward into table pose. Good. Trace, are you all good? Can you hear me okay and everything? Yeah? Okay. All right, so let's come into table pose and we're gonna get a little deeper into the hips and the hamstrings. Feel free to use blocks for this if when we get to the hamstring stretch, it's a little bit challenging or your hands don't reach the ground comfortably. But we're gonna try it actually without hands um, anyway, so you can see how it goes. Let's take the right foot forward in between the hands and slide the left knee back for familiar low lunge position. And let's point the back toes so that you can press the top of the ankle into the floor. And with that pressure, kind of firing up the front side of the leg so it's less of a passive but more of an active stretch. Good. In this position, try and lift your chest slightly so that you extend your upper back. Good. And then inhale, reach the arms forward and up, coming to low crescent lunge. Really push down through the front foot, through the heel, the big the pinky toe side, so that again this leg is active rather than passive. Good. From here, sweep your arms behind you, squeeze the shoulder blades together. So we're going to try this half split without hands, but if it feels unsteady, you can put them down or use your blocks. Lean your upper body forward as you simultaneously start to send your hips back and lift the right toes up off of the floor, straightening the right leg. Heart space is reaching forward, but the arms are reaching back. And again, if you need to ground yourself, hands can come down. But if you feel steady in the balance, continue to maintain that chest opening. Good. Let's try returning slowly with your balance. Sweep the arms forward. Bend your front knee as you drop the hips and reach the arms up. Take a deep breath in. Once more to the half split. Exhale, hips down, arms sweep back. Lift the right toes. Good. In this position, put your left hand down, rotate from your waist, and raise your right arm up, creating a twist here in the half split. One more breath in. Exhale, release the right hand to the floor, return to the low lunge, bending the front knee, and then tuck your back toes under and lift the back knee off of the mat, straightening that leg. Good. From here, plant your palms and step into plank pose. Take a moment just to find that long line through the body, pressing strongly through the palms, squeezing the legs together. One more breath in. And then exhale, gently lower your body to the floor. Good. Once you're there, point your toes, squeeze the shoulders and elbows back. Inhale to a low or a high cobra pose. Exhale, let it go, rolling down. Twice more. Inhaling, coming to cobra. Exhaling to release. Last one. Inhale. Exhale, let it go. Good. Press up to your hands and knees. Finding the table pose, and we'll switch sides. The left foot 
we'll step forward in between your hands. And your right knee is going to go back. Point those toes. Take a moment to settle into the hips. Good. Press the top of the back foot into the floor and start to feel your chest lift forward and up. Good. Inhale. Reach the arms forward and up over the shoulders. Driving down through the front foot as well. Energizing the inner thigh as you lengthen upward. Good. In this position, sweep the arms back behind you, squeezing the shoulder blades together. And then as you lean your upper body forward, press into your front foot, send the hips back, and peel the toes up, finding a balance here in your half split. Tailbone is sticking back, chest is reaching forward and up. Steady breath. Right, let's try and return. Sweep the arms forward. Bend that knee. Send your hips forward and down. And lift the arms. Returning to crescent lunge. And then exhale. Try once again. Hips back. Sweep the arms back. Half split. Good. From this position, put your right hand down. Twist from your waist. And reach the left arm up. One more breath in, and exhale, release, come forward again into your low lunge. Good, tuck your back toes under and lift the knee nice and high, plant your palms, and come back to plank. Good, squeeze your legs together, press firmly into your palms, navel draws up and in. A few steady breaths. Good. Last inhalation. Exhale, lower your body to the floor. Point your toes, shoulders and elbows, squeeze back and inhale just once to cobra this time. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, push up to your hands and knees. Send your hips to your heels, plant your palms and engage your arms strongly, already pushing your mat forward and then lift your hips up for downward facing dog. Adjust your feet as you need to. Good. Check in with your head and your neck. Letting go of any holding the back of the neck. And taking a few breaths to let yourself settle into the pose. Good. From here, look forward. Take a deep breath in. As you breathe out, step up to the front of your mat and just hang here over your legs in a standing forward bend. Let the back of your neck release. You can hold on to your elbows and let your shoulders melt down. Feel all of that length through your spine and through the muscles that are on either side of your spine, the erector spine muscle group. Good. From here, we're going to come into a squat. You can let go of your elbows, bend the knees so your fingertips touch the floor, and just widen your feet to the position you like for a seated squat. Turn the toes out slightly, and then bend your knees, dropping the tailbone down. Good. Take your elbows to the inner knees, or inner thighs, gently widen them and bring the palms together in front of your heart and feel like you're trying to lift your sternum up into your thumbs, lengthening your spine, especially your upper back. Good, a nice low, deep breath. One more breath in. Exhale, round the spine. Fold forward through the legs, dropping the head. Hands can be anywhere out in front of you. 
Tailbone is still low to the floor. Now we're completely countering the position that we started the practice in. Wheel your back round. Good. From this position, slide your hands a little closer to your feet. Push the floor and start to lift your hips up into the air, returning to the forward bend, gradually toe healing your feet back to that hips width distance. Good. From here, take the fingers in front of the shin bones, press against them, and inhale to your flat back position. Shoulder blades retract as the tailbone moves back, crown of the head moves forward. Good. Hold here for a few breaths. Work on really strengthening these muscles here in the lower back. And one more breath in. Exhale, fold forward. Bend your knees like you're about to do chair pose. Let your arms dangle down as you roll up through a rag doll. One vertebra at a time, coming upright to stand. So just stand tall in mountain pose. Take a few breaths here. Notice how your body feels so far. I'm just going to turn my fan up a little bit higher. It's a little bit warm in here tonight. There we go. Hopefully that doesn't cause too much wind above here. All right, let's just do a really slow flowing sequence. Starting at the top of the mat here in mountain. Let's inhale and reach the arms up over the shoulders. Then bend the knees as you exhale into chair pose. Take one breath in here. Exhale and sweep the hands behind you, clasping the fingers. Roll the shoulders and elbows back as you inhale, straighten the arms. Exhale, fold forward, dropping the head as the arms come up and over your head. Good. Just take a few breaths here, getting to this shoulder mobility work. If this is too much, you can always do this using a strap to connect your hands. So the next time that you exhale, lower your fist, separate the hands and let them come down. Good. From here, inhale to the flat back position. Exhale, bend your knees and touch the ground. Lunge your left foot to the back of your mat. High lunge. We're going to keep the left hand on the floor and take a twist. Raise your right arm as you rotate from your waist. Good. Option to do a half bind here if you like, rotating the right thumb in, wrapping that arm around your back, so the elbow's bending. Try and glide the shoulder blade farther back to open the chest again. Keep pressing the mat with that left palm. That shoulder is strong, that elbow is straight. Good. If you're in the half bind, reach the hand up again. And exhale, take that hand to the floor and just step back and up into downward facing dog from here. But notice the difference between the right and left sides and the hips and the quads. And we'll just take a little passive quad stretch here from three legged dog. Raise your right leg up into the air and then roll the hip open to the side and bend that knee, letting the weight of your heel fall toward your hip. Lengthening the front side of your upper leg there. So one more breath in. And exhale, close the hip, placing the right foot back to the mat. Look forward and inhale. Exhale, step to your hands. Hands to your shins. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees, arms dangle down as you rise up through a ragdoll, all the way to stand, and then roll the shoulders down and back. Find mountain pose. Take a few breaths here. And then we'll come through that for the second step, for the second side. Inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, bend the knees, sitting back into chair pose. Inhale here. Exhale, sweep the arms behind you. 
Class with the other thumb on top, the one you might not normally take. Shoulders and elbows squeeze back. Inhale to straighten the arms behind you. Exhale, fold the upper body over the thighs. Hips lift up as the head draws down. Gradually letting the arms just move up and overhead. No forcing, just letting the mobility you have and gravity do the work. The next time you exhale, slowly release the hands, separating them, and let the arms come down. Good. Take the hands to your shin bones. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, bend your knees, touching the mat, and lunge your right foot all the way to the back of your mat. Deep bend in the left knee. Good. Spinal twist. Right hand stays down. Rotate from your waist as you raise the left arm up. And then option to take the half spine by rotating the thumb in and then wrapping that arm around the back. Feel that shoulder blade glide back if you're trying to turn the left side of your chest up toward the ceiling. Keep that pressure in the right hand. Good, if the arm is behind you, slowly unwind it and reach it up again. And then exhale that hand to the floor. And from here, simply step back into downward facing dog. Maybe pedal the legs for a moment. Just noticing the difference between right and left. And then we're gonna raise the left leg up into the air. Inhale, and then exhale, open the hip, bend the knee, finding that passive quad stretch here. Last breath in. Exhale, close the hip, return the left foot to the mat. Good, look forward, inhale. And exhale, step to your hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees, let the arms dangle down as you roll up through ragdoll. Finding your way to stand, draw the shoulders down and back, and feel a tall mountain pose. Focus on one point in front of you or close your eyes. Just try and slow down your breath. Feel your feet pressing into your mat. Feel strong energy in your legs. From here, we're going to take a wide stance on the mat. We're going to do one more little standing sequence here. A wide-legged forward fold. And we're going to take that same arm position that we just practiced. So hands interlace behind the back. So once you have that nice space between your feet, engage the muscles in your legs. So your kneecaps lift up toward your hips. Find the hands together, shoulders back, and extend your arms. Good. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, hips go back, upper body comes forward. Try and keep your spine straight as long as possible, and then gradually let your upper back round, slowly lifting the arms up and over. So the knuckles first are up toward the ceiling, and then they might even start pointing behind you, depending on your, more, your mobility. Most important, however, is squeezing the shoulder blades together. So if that's not possible with straight arms, you can do this with bent elbows, or you can do this holding a strap. Let's be here in this inverted forward fold. Keep pressing through the inside edges of your feet, so the big toe mound, the inner heel, the front of your thighs fired up, supporting the extension of the knee. And when you're ready to release the shoulder action, stay in the forward bend, just release your arms, separate the hands, and place them on the floor in between your feet. If they don't touch the floor, you can grab blocks and set those under your hands. 
Press the floor gently with your palms and feel your scapula, your shoulder blades, slide down your back so that you have lots of space for your neck. And then we're going to slowly come to the flat back position here. Lift your head and chest. Walk your hands forward so that they are underneath your shoulders when you arrive. And just take a moment here feeling the shift in blood pressure, pausing for a few breaths. Good, and then maintain this position in your back. So fire up your lower abdominals and your lower back muscles. Bring your hands to your waist, and then slowly press your hips forward in space to rise up. Good, let your arms relax for a moment. Turn your left toes toward the short edge of your mat, and angle your right heel a little farther back toward that opposite short edge, setting up for triangle pose. Re-engage the legs if they relaxed, and let's open the arms now so the left arm reaches forward over the left toes, right arm reaches back. Good, lean your hips toward the back of your mat and your upper body toward that front foot, and then pivot the arms. You can use your shin or a block, or if the hands touch the floor, you can connect there. Good, and steady breath. Re-engage that energy in your thighs if you lost it. One more really big breath in. And as you breathe out, contract your core and rise up. Good. Relax your arms for a moment. And let's just pivot the feet so you're going to face the other end of your mat. So rotate the left toes in so they're kind of parallel again. Maybe even overdo that angle in the heel. And then the right toes are going to point toward that short edge of your mat. Re-engage the legs and open your arms again. Hips go toward the back of your mat, toward the left heel. Upper body moves forward in space toward the right toes. And then pivot your arms. Triangle pose. Using whatever support you have for your right hand. Good. Try and lengthen the right side of your ribcage. Feel it draw down toward the floor and forward in space. One more deep breath in. As you breathe out, contract your core and rise up. Good, release your arms, turn the right toes in, and then just heel toe a few times so that you can come out of this stance. And let's come back to the front of the mat. We're gonna start to take things down toward the floor again. We'll get there just through a little easy floating sequence, starting from mountain. Inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, bend the knees, dive forward. Inhale, flat back position. Exhale, bend your knees, step the feet back to plank pose. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, knees to the floor, bend your elbows, and send the rest of the body down. Good, point your toes. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, release. Inhale, come just up to table pose. Slide your knees forward and wider apart. Point your toes and sit back on your heels, child's pose. Take your time settling down here. Soften the elbows, let your shoulders release, and close the eyes if you can. Feel your waist expand every time you inhale. Feel that space contract every time you exhale. We're going to do a little more chest and shoulder opening. So we're going to take thread and needle. I'm just going to move my blocks out of the way here. 
So let's start by raising the left arm. You can inhale and reach that left arm up. And then exhale, sweep it under you. So the shoulder and the side of your head come down to the floor. Good. Move your right hand over and push the ground with it. Leaning back, you're trying to pull that shoulder blade away from the spine. Really go into the twisting aspect of this tonight. So a couple of options for you. If you want to work on a little balance with this, you can straighten your right leg behind you and then contract the glute and lift the leg up into the air. I usually do that without lifting the arm also. I mean, it's a little much to also try and do the arm thing. Or you can have the knee down like it was and do another chest opening, raising the right arm, taking a little half bind. Whatever variation would feel good in your body tonight. Always maintaining that action of leaning back, spreading the left shoulder blade. Good. Wherever you took this pose, gradually reverse your steps. Press the right palm down to come off the left shoulder and reach up again to the left, countering the twist. And then find your way back into the table. The other side, raise your right arm, inhale and open to that side, exhale, sweep it under you, shoulder comes down, right side of your face is down, good, step your left hand over a little, push the floor and lean back, feel the right shoulder blade spread, breathe into that deep twist, so you can try the leg balance if you want, straightening the left leg and lifting it up behind you. A few breaths there. And then maybe you can come back down if you want to try the chest opening, raising the left arm, and maybe taking the half bind if that feels good. Turns to the floor, push down to come off the right shoulder and reach up again and then take it back to the table. Good. Walk your hands forward a little bit, spread the fingers widely. We're going to take one final downward facing dog, hips to heels, push forward on the mat to straighten the arms and then lift up. Good. Let your head and neck release. Find length through your arms. Elbows are really straight, triceps are active. Let's see if you can take five more breaths here. Good. When you're ready to come out, exhale and take the knees to the floor. Then we're going to take some seated poses to finish up tonight. I want to start with a wide-legged seated forward bend. So I'm just going to get some of my props in play here. I'm going to do this with my hips elevated just a little bit by the blanket. Because the legs are spread widely apart in this one, the blanket can actually kind of get in the way of your thighs. So when I use a blanket in this pose, I actually rotate it, and I'll face the camera. Camera. I rotate it so I'm actually just, I have like a corner facing forward so that the blanket doesn't end up also supporting the back of my thighs. But I just have my hip joints here at like the corner edge of the blanket, if that makes sense. So then the thighs have more free space to go. So we're going to take the legs as wide apart as possible in this position. Heels are in contact with the mat or the floor. Come a little more forward so both of my heels are on the ground. All right, point the toes up and drive the back of your thighs down toward the floor, hugging the kneecaps up and in and firming up the quads. Good, so just sit tall here for a moment. You can hold the back of your legs, hands can be on the floor, whatever. Just find that length in your spine. Good. 
Good, and then we're gonna rock the pelvis a few times. So you can do this without hands. They can just be in the air or on your legs or in front of you. Keep your spine straight and lean forward without bending your back. So your pelvis is rotating and then come straight upright again. So do that a few times. Lean forward without bending your low back and return once more. Rock the pelvis forward and then hands down. Stay where you are and start to let this become your forward fold. Keep the legs engaged. And slow, deep breath.
you're ready to come out, inhale and rise up. Good, all right, let's come down off of whatever support you might have underneath you and get comfortable for Shavasana, final relaxation. you are settled on your back, let your arms relax down by your sides. When you feel ready, slide your legs down if you haven't already, and gently close your eyes. Just take a moment to notice all of the work you did in your body tonight, noticing especially how your spine feels. Allow it to settle into the ground, visualizing all the natural curvatures in your spine, from the back of the neck all the way down to the tip of the tailbone. And we'll release the breath by taking one final deep inhalation through the nose and out the mouth. Let your natural breath return to your body here as you rest.
slowly bring your attention back to your breath. Begin to move in your body whenever you feel ready. And eventually turn over to one side, curling up into your field pose. And just pausing there briefly to notice how you feel. And eventually coming upright to a comfortable seated posture, keeping your eyes still closed. Once you're sitting, let your breath fill your body again. Bring the palms together in front of your heart. We'll end chanting OM one time, taking a deep breath in. Expressing gratitude to your 